From the minute Nikki was born, she made her presence felt. Uh, she was a little cracker, but she seemed quite a sad little girl. And I couldn't understand what was going on. And I used to say to her, Nikki, what's wrong? And she'd say, no, nothing, I'm all right. But she clearly wasn't. And then I noticed that she wasn't always finishing her lunch. And, and obviously she started to lose weight. Eventually she couldn't go to school anymore. And one day I was at home with her and she was so tired all the time. And I, I had her on my lap and I, I, I mean, I'm ashamed to say, but I did try and force food in her mouth. I was so desperate and that didn't work. And she tried to go upstairs to the bedroom and she had to go up on her hands and I thought, this is it. So I gathered her up, carried her to the car and I took her to the doctors. And I said, I am not going anywhere. I will sit here, it was a Friday. I said, I will stay here all weekend for as long as it takes until you find my daughter a bed. It got to the point where I used to, when she came home from each unit, that I had to make sure that she sat naked to eat her food because otherwise it didn't matter what the food was, it would go in her socks, down her knickers. And when she was really angry with me, it actually went up the wall. You know, when she was in hospital, I remember Great Ormond Street, and I just pulled back the duvet and got in with her. And I said to her, you know, Nikki, I promise you, she must have been about 11, that there is a life out there for you. I promise. We're gonna have some amazing times, I swear. Please, just try a bit harder if you can. We've got a lot of living to do, and we did. I can remember one day she was there on a Saturday morning and I was having my breakfast and she said, Mum, you've got to watch this. And I said, what is it? She said, it's called Big Brother. I went, oh yeah. I said, well, what? She said, I'll show you. So she put it on the television and it was when Jade Goody was in it. And when she forced this on me, she said to me, I'm going to apply for this. I said, please don't. And she said, why? She's fantastic. So she did apply. The first time she didn't get in because she fessed up about her anorexia. So she was a bit wiser next time round. And I wasn't really worried about her eating in front of other people. And I thought this might help her because it's a challenge. She couldn't afford to be different. Well, she was different from everyone else, but not around eating you know she had to let someone prepare her food and cook it and then she had to sit down and eat it you know and i thought well it'll either work or it won't well it did and it was a bonkers ride but I th that was when she was at her happiest the night it was announced that everything was going into lockdown she said to me I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I said, you will, darling. I said, you know, if you need looking after, come down to me or I'll come up here and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll be together and we'll get through it. But I knew what was worrying her was the fact that where she lived, they got their own gym mm -hmm. and that shut in a heartbeat. So she went out and purchased this horribly expensive cross trainer and she'd get on it while I was sitting there. She said, I'm only going to do 10 minutes. But she had it up quite high and I could, you know, she was strutting. I said, Nikki, would you just get off it? It used to make me cry. Mm. And then she'd sit there with weights. And I'd say, please, Nikki, don't, don't. She said, mum, if I'm going to eat, this is what I need to do but she was just getting more and more sick and I was going up and down. Um, really, I was just going up to look at her, you know, and, um, 
And it was at that point where she lost quite a lot of weight and her friends started the, the fundraising. <laughs> So at half past three in the morning, I get a phone call, which is quite normal with Nikki. She said, hi, mum. I said, hello, darling, are you okay? She said, yeah, just wanted to let you know that um, I made it to the bathroom and back. And she had a, she bought herself a frame. I said, there you go, there you go. I said, look, Nikki, take your time. She said to me, mum, I'm so tired. And I said, okay, sausage, you go back to sleep. And I'll call you in the morning. She died. But I was the last person she spoke to. And once Natalie and I had turned up, they were allowed to call the coroner. Watching her being wheeled out of her bedroom in a body bag. <laughs> it's like the, the worst nightmare I've ever experienced. But they took her down in the lift. And just before they left the building, I said to them, I said, which end is her head? And he said, it's that end. And I just put my hands on her head and said goodbye to her. This was a few years back. Um, and she sent me this and it says, Dearest Mum, every day I think to myself how lucky I am to have you as my mum. You really are unique and very special. Sorry this is so late, but it comes with the same sentiment and love. Never doubt how much I truly love you, Nick. <laughs>